Steve Conroy from Lug Away Junk Removal. Did I get that right? Got it right. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got into the junk removal industry um, and how you started your business? Sure. So I was actually working as a laborer for a similar type of business during the summer of colleges. Um, so I worked with a gentleman uh, in the town I grew up in. He has a disposal business. Um, I worked as a laborer for him for probably two years before I was a foreman. Um, what okay. I was doing on the side of that was I had an internship. I, I'm a certified audio engineer. Um, oh, wow. okay. so I was, you know, getting into recording music and all that stuff. And it was just like the road to that being successful is, I mean, you can do it, but I didn't have any money mm -hmm. and I needed to make some money. So I'm working okay. with this guy. He bumps me up to foreman. Um, you know, long story short, I end up, you know, I'm running, running the crew and everything. And then he decided mm -hmm. to downsize actually. So with his good graces, I was like, listen, I'm going to, you know, try and break off on my own and do something. I've never been one to, not that I've never been, I, a better way of saying it was, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm an overachiever, okay. but someone gives me a task, I do it and I say, what's next? Mm -hmm. um, when you're in a awesome. position of like a nine to five or something, you're just doing mm -hmm they just say, stay busy from nine to five. Like, don't come and ask me to do more stuff. Just get done what mm -hmm. you got to do and, and just make it look like you're busy until you got to leave. Um, yeah, there's like a limit like, and yeah. Yeah, it's just a lot of wasted time. And I'm kind of like a, I just need to be moving all the time. And I like mm -hmm. interacting with people and I, I like the physical aspect. Uh, not so okay. much now that I'm, I'm 30 years old, <laughs> but <laughs> I still do it. I still like it, but. You know, yeah. as the years progress, I gotta, you know, I gotta get off the truck. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was kind of a no brainer for me. I, mm -hmm. I, um, I'm very good with speaking with people. I had no experience mm -hmm. running a business. Um, okay. And I was actually just talking to um, one of, uh, one of the followers on YouTube today uh, mm -hmm. contacted me through Instagram. And he was like, okay. I don't know anything about running a business. How am I supposed to do this? And I mm -hmm. said, listen, this is my fourth year in business and I'm still learning how to mm -hmm. run the business. So there's never- How did you learn that stuff? Like what was the first thing you did when you decided you wanted to start your own business? How do you even go about doing that? Is it research? Is it talking yes. with friends? How do you go about that? Sure, so I, I would recommend working for someone um, in a mm -hmm. similar type of setting. Okay. Um, like I said, I was working. So this guy I worked for, we did junk removal two days a week. And then he had a bunch of trash routes. I hated the mm -hmm. trash routes, um, but I, I liked doing the junk removal stuff. He also offered mm -hmm. dumpster rental and whatever. So I understood what went into it. I understood, you know, when you go into someone's house, the goal is to get all the items out without, you know, any right. damage. And mm -hmm. I understood that when he hired someone on and they weren't working well, I was the one going to tell him, listen, this new guy is okay, but these are the things he's doing wrong. Um, mm -hmm. So the position that I was in, um, it was like I was kind of running the company, but I didn't own it. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So for anyone that would be interested in, you know, doing this, it's, you don't need to work for someone, but at, mm -hmm. at least get a couple of months under your belt for one of the franchises so you can you can understand what really goes into it a lot of guys think you know mm -hmm. i oh i have a truck i want to start picking mm -hmm. up junk but you know you have to advertise you have to make sure that your help is going to show right. up what happens when your help doesn't show up there's a lot mm -hmm. of um it's a you're a one-man show trying to make things happen sure. um, and i explained it and in how my um Sure. Yeah, sorry. I just wanted to ask you, how, how big is your business now? How many people do you have working for you? Or is it just you for now? I saw some guys in the videos, so I assumed you have a you have a team. Yeah, so it's me. So it's always me and one guy in the truck. Mm -hmm. So I have th three guys that I kind of rotate through. Um, mm -hmm. And so you technically, I'm like a one truck operation. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in the process now of expanding that um but 
you know, finding someone to, to drive a truck and to trust them to basically mm -hmm. be me is very difficult. <laughs> it's very, very challenging. Yeah. And how do you go about hiring? Like, uh, if you have any tips also for our audience in terms of somebody who's really, really kind of established in their own small business, but looking to expand, what are some things that you've learned in that, in that process? Yeah, so I know you're still there, but. Sure. Yeah. So what I have learned is, uh, you have to be able to trust these people mm -hmm. and not only trust them on an intellectual level of just having a good feeling around them, but yeah. you need to understand that you're going into people's homes every day right. and you can't have someone who might steal silverware or who mm -hmm. might, um, you know, poke a hole in a wall and he's not going to tell you about it, you know, right. things like that. So I've had great luck in, um, you know, when I hire someone on, if for whatever reason they decide they don't want to do it, or um, mm -hmm. I had uh, one kid that just ended up going off to college, um, I okay. tap into their network. I say, listen, mm -hmm. like you're, you're a, a, a really nice kid. You're a strong strapping young kid. Do you have any friends, mm -hmm. you know, that you can, you, can yeah. you know, refer me to? And then I always, anytime someone, you know, comes in for the first day, I say, listen, it's not for everyone, but you know, what we do mm -hmm. today is, you know, going to be an everyday thing. And if you like it, right. you know, you like it. If not, then it's not for you. What I can mm -hmm. say is temp agencies, at least in Massachusetts, are probably the worst way to get a good employee. I, I wouldn't say that you can't get a good um, Okay. But the people on temp agencies, from my experience, um, mm. are <laughs> the laziest people that I have ever wow. met in my entire life. Unfortunately. So it's easier to go through like local networks and, and things local like that? Local network or mm. post on Facebook, post on, uh, okay. on the Nextdoor app. Um, mm -hmm. I have the advantage of being, uh, of, I, well, I guess it's not an advantage. It doesn't matter what age you are, but mm -hmm. I, I can reach out to like my buddies and their brothers or their sister's mm -hmm. friends or their cousins, stuff like right. that. So I, I, I think I have a, a good, um, not an advantage, but I know a lot of people. I have a lot of family. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a lot of family friends. I come from a big family. So the network there okay. is big, right. but even, even having said that when I started, I mean, it was, mm -hmm. I couldn't get anyone to work for me because when I didn't, did you start? I started Just in 2017. 2017. Okay. Yep. And why, so why was that? Why couldn't you, why couldn't you find anyone in the beginning? I think it was because I would, well, first of all, I was asking my friends, and my mm -hmm. friends are great people, but, <laughs> you know, at that age when I was, I think I was 26, you know, wow. no, no one wanted to, you know, we were mm -hmm. all working. So if I'm like, hey, I got a job to do at eight o'clock at night, they're like, yeah, no way, buddy. Don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. when I, when I, had, when I had left my job and I was, you know, full time in just trying to get everything I could. I did a lot of work by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and wow. then I, I, I did have my friends, uh, my friends help me, but like we, you know, we've spoken about good work is hard to find. And, and mm -hmm. for anyone who right. finds a good helper and someone who's, you know, they don't have to be eager to learn, but someone who's respectable, who can, you know, mm -hmm. hang around the customer and, and that, Mm -hmm. pay them to pay them to hang around because mm -hmm. that's you know that that's your business there you know if, if you're mm -hmm. not in the if you're not in the same room as the customer and you're the, the kid you right. have working for you standing there staring at the ground your customer is going to mm -hmm. say why is this guy in my house right now <laughs> right. um okay so i just want to go over so i understand in 2017 you you didn't buy your first truck, right? I, I think I watched a video about that. You you started with a with the van that you built you built it yourself, right, or something like yeah, this. Yeah. So I, yep. So I started with a, a pickup truck, a Silverado 1500. Okay. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, so the I, I touched on that in the in the video, mm -hmm. but it's a funny story. So I bought that truck um, 
and it was like a wicked nice truck. And then okay. three months later, I started lug away and I was like, mm. I can't afford anything. So I have to use this truck. I was like, why did I buy such a nice truck? Like I'm going <laughs> to get destroyed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was a huge, like, that was an issue because every time we were doing work, I was like, I was like, watch out for the truck, watch out for the truck. Like, <laughs> like your but, Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like when in, you're doing work and stuff, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it's a work truck. Who cares if something happens? Yeah. To you? you don't want to actively mm -hmm. damage your vehicle. Mm -hmm. But um, so, yeah, I started out with a pickup truck and, and I built uh, five foot high walls on the side. And um, wow. we put like a little swinging gate on the back and, and that was it. Mm -hmm. I mean, any, you can, anyone can start that way. Anyone mm -hmm. can start that way. And how did you get from that to where you are today? Yep. So I, I touched on it uh, in that video as well, but right. we, so I used the pickup truck for, I want to say like five months, four or five mm -hmm. months. Um, and I told myself, I said, once I have $10,000 in my company account, right. I'm going to wait. It was like two or three months. I said, mm -hmm. after I pay my expenses every month, if there's $10,000, great. We'll do that the next mm -hmm. month. If there's $10,000 still in there after two or three months mm -hmm. of that, um, I had told myself, spend that $10,000 as a down payment on the dump truck. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but to get to that point, I mean, I was working like, uh, you know, like a madman. I was taking any mm -hmm. job I could get at that point. I didn't, I didn't have a great price structure. Um, mm -hmm. I was learning how to price. I was undervaluing my, uh, my service. Like when I look back, mm -hmm. when I did that video, I looked back on what I was charging that entire first year, I should have, I should have at least have doubled what I actually made mm -hmm. had wow. I known what I was, what I was worth. If I was charging for my mm -hmm. value, I was providing, but mm -hmm. that comes with the territory. You need to understand, yeah. you need to get burned on so many jobs so that mm -hmm. you understand your value. So if you mm -hmm. do a job and you know you charge 400 bucks for it and then you lose money, you're mm -hmm. never gonna do that job again. You're gonna know yeah. I need to charge X amount of dollars to make money off of this job. So right. learning with it from experience in this field is like the, the best kind of knowledge or, mm -hmm. or um, kind of advice or learning that, that you can get is just by doing the work. And, and did you have like a mentor or something like somebody, other friends in junk removal or groups that you follow or anything like that? Or you just no. really learned everything from, from every experience? Yeah. So I, and I think I touched on this in one of the videos. I might've edited mm -hmm. it out because I thought I sounded like an idiot when I said it, but <laughs> I, I, I don't do social media. I never was a social media guy. Mm -hmm. Like I was the guy in high school with no Facebook yeah. account. Like I, I don't mm -hmm. know anything about that. So mm -hmm. just last year, I joined the, uh, these Facebook groups for junk removal. And, uh, and that's okay. the reason why I started the YouTube channel, because I was like, okay. if I knew that all of this information was out there, I would have been so mm -hmm. much, I would have been so further along in such a shorter mm -hmm. amount of time. Um, okay. And that's when I decided, I was like, listen, like, I don't know everything about junk removal. I'm still growing. Mm -hmm. I'm still learning. But I have... Mm -hmm. I have been through so much BS that that you don't need to go through. So I was like, you know what? I'll start a channel and just start documenting things. Mm -hmm. And uh, each job is different. Each situation is different. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. And what's I, the, the goal of your channel is to help other people start businesses like you did? Is that is that what the... Yeah. Who so, are, who's your audience? Who's Who are the people that you're that are watching your videos? Yes. Yeah, so it seems like the people watching the videos are mostly um, people looking to better themselves. Maybe they mm -hmm. they've heard of junk removal, but they haven't started yet um, or okay. they've decided to do junk removal and they're still in the process of actually mm -hmm. making the jump to full time. Uh, and then there's the people that 
seem to just like to watch us pick up trash which i mean that's that's cool i guess <laughs> okay yeah like, they, love the, they love the day in the life videos and i'm like mm -hmm. you if you guys They're like awesome. them, I'll keep, I'll keep making them but we're just yeah. picking up trash all day um how do you manage how do you manage making your videos and doing getting the work done like isn't that a crazy crazy I wish I recorded I Connor and <laughs> I think I, I thought I was recording him and the video was off, but he, he, he basically called me a cartoon character. He's like, dude, sometimes <laughs> when you're filming these videos, you, you remind me of a cartoon character because you are running around mm -hmm. like crazy trying to get all this footage, but you're, but right. somehow we're getting the jobs done in the same amount of time. And I mm -hmm. was like, I was like, yeah, man. I was like, I think I'm just, I think I just got something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wanted to ask you, um, like besides YouTube, you actually, you have a video on this too, the marketing. Um, what's your, what's the most useful channel for you on social media now that you have jumped into that world sort of? Yeah. Um, so my area is kind of odd. So I don't get much business from Facebook um okay. or or instagram unless mm -hmm. it's someone who referred someone to me and and they okay. didn't want to call they just wanted to hit me up through social media um mm -hmm. so for me and my business i'm sure if i started hammering facebook ads i would get something out of it but i spend mm -hmm. um i spend my marketing money on google ads and okay. seo mm -hmm. and Got it. that's like those are those are the um google ads is mm -hmm. is like a must in in this industry yeah. it's just tough sure. for people starting out because it's such an expensive um mm -hmm. it's expensive to start and you're not guaranteed anything so you can get you can spend 1500 bucks and get one job sure um, yeah so it's we it's actually tough, tough. Um, part of our platform is ad tracking. So we're we're pretty aware of the problem with uh, you know optimizing your ad spend and knowing where the you know the good leads are coming from. So that's definitely we definitely know that that's a, a challenge for uh, home service professionals throughout in, in general. But it's it's interesting that you're saying that as well. So Google has been a winner for you. You found. Yeah, definitely right. Google. And then we do a lot mm -hmm. of, um, uh, and I touched on this in that video as well. We do a lot of right. local advertising. And right, just you said like, in the groups. Yeah, yeah these, th we have these, um, we have these newspapers around that are called hometown weeklies. And they're mm -hmm. in the, every town has one in, in this area. Like, you know, like Newton, mm -hmm. Wellesley, Needham. Yeah, 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 right. Um, mm -hmm. so it, that, and that's something that just blasts out to the homeowner whether yeah. they read it or not i don't know if they do but i know that you know when i get a call and and someone says oh i got you from the hometown weekly automatically yeah. that customer to me is is a better customer than any other customer because mm. it's local and the means that they want to support a local business whereas mm -hmm. you will get customers on google that you're paying for um mm -hmm. that are just price shopping you know they're mm -hmm. looking around and they're right. saying you know how much is it for a truckload and it's like mm -hmm. my truckload might be more expensive than the guy down the street but i include x y and z he and doesn't include pricing. anything he's right. going to bill you afterwards you're not going to know you're going to have a bad experience wow. which is why mm -hmm. i always tell people i say read our google reviews i say so much of our business is yeah. referral based like i'm an open mm -hmm. book to everyone i'm transparent yeah. and that's mm -hmm. the way that anyone should be running their their business regardless right. but especially a business like this if you're not transparent about anything these people already 50 mm. percent of them don't want to pay you to take their stuff away but they don't have the right. means to do it so right. as long yeah. as you're an open book with them and there's nothing you know mm -hmm. hidden and you know you're not going to be the guy that's like let me email you an invoice later for you know 500 dollars <laughs> more mm -hmm. than i told you right it, it's like you know it, it's crazy and can you tell me now that just because you mentioned reviews um i'm sure you don't have very many of them it sounds like you run your business uh ship shape um but i'm wondering how i'm wondering what's the most challenging job you've had and um how you handle like any mess ups or bad reviews uh that's 
pretty relevant to our audience. You know, sometimes you do get a bad review and maybe it could be just a misunderstanding, but um, what do you do about those? Sure. So I am happy to say, and I don't have a piece of wood in here, but I need to knock on it. <laughs> knock on, I'll we, knock on my desk for you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have not gotten a bad review yet, but wow, I will share an experience that I had when I first started. Mm -hmm. It was not a review, but it was an email that I got from uh, a okay. client. We removed mm -hmm. a ride on lawnmower and mm -hmm. I was not upfront with him about cost because I was okay. scared at what I should charge him. This guy said he mm -hmm. didn't care what I charged him. So I <laughs> yeah. looked at the job. I was like, nah, I guess I'll charge the guy 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. So looking back on it, I would probably still charge 200, but at the place I was in at that time, I probably should have charged him like, I don't know, a hundred bucks for it. Okay. You, don't, you, don't, you don't pay to dump that stuff, it's scrap metal. So yeah. it was extremely unprofessional of me to do. And this gentleman wrote me an email that said, uh, with a check for a hundred, when I charged mm -hmm. him 200, he said, here's the check for a hundred. I'm sure you probably mm -hmm. scrapped it and made some money off of it. I was disappointed in uh in your in your service in the way that you uh you mm. acted when we were in person all this stuff and uh i wrote him an email back saying you know you were one of the uh, my first 10 customers we had ever serviced i'm still learning mm -hmm. everything um that i need to do yeah. if you ever need us i sent him the check back and i said if you ever need our services again i'd be more than happy to uh, work mm. out a price with you and knock a handsome amount of money off uh, to make things right, all this stuff. Mm. This guy mailed me back a $200 check and he wow. has referred me probably like $30,000 worth of business wow. through um, his, uh, his real estate firm that, that mm -hmm. he owns. So That's incredible. it just wow. goes to show like, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing and but you were I wasn't honest up, about it. Yeah. I wasn't up front with the guy mm -hmm. and he called me out on it and mm -hmm. and and I reciprocated. I said, listen, you're right. Mm -hmm. That was a clown move for me to do. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, just being honest about stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, and what was the other uh what was yeah, I just wanted to ask you, like I just wanted to I just wanted to ask you about like uh, the most challenging job you've had. I know, actually, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but I know you have a video about a hoarder house and I know uh, junk removal can bring up, you know, sometimes it's uh, after you do estate cleanouts, after somebody dies, or I don't know, maybe after divorce, like kind of complicated situations, maybe not everyone is complicated, but I wonder how you handle those um, sort of challenging uh, jobs, or maybe you have another story about a, about a challenge, a very challenging job that you learned from. Yeah, sure. Um, so that hoarding cleanup we have not done yet. I was quoting that mm -hmm. guy um, and he, he has, so in the beginning of that video, we picked up a bunch of bags of trash, like on the mm -hmm. side of his fence. We've yeah. been doing that for him regularly. And mm -hmm. I don't even believe that he lives there. I think it's his, it's his mother's house. And mm -hmm. one of those situations where they're going right. to have to sell the house eventually. And mm -hmm. um, so that's scheduled. I, we haven't scheduled it yet, but it'll probably happen yeah. in the next few months. I'll, I'll record sure. that though. Cause that, that's going to mm -hmm. be a nightmare. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I would say bad jobs. I mean, we've definitely had a handful of, uh, we've definitely had a handful of bad jobs, but not, mm. not jobs that I would, I would classify as bad because of the, like the items or the material. Like we don't, okay. I would never say like, like a hoarding situation. Yeah. If there's like mm -hmm. bodily fluids and stuff like that, that would be bad. Yeah. But um, I think the, the, the bad jobs to me, are are when the customer and i like i say i'm transparent with mm -hmm. everyone i try and make their right. life as easy as possible but when there's somehow when we show up and there was a massive miscommunication on mm -hmm. what we they want us to do and yeah. i try and iron all of this out beforehand mm -hmm. um so like if we show up to a home and we're supposed to take a half of a load of stuff and mm -hmm. I get there and there's like four trucks worth of stuff that they expect wow. us to take that yeah. day. That, that to me is a, is a bad job because mm -hmm. 
now everything is messed up. So mm -hmm. we did one of these actually the other day. So in some of these, those day in the lives, there's a job in Holliston that we're doing, clearing stuff out of a garage. Mm -hmm. The final clear out was supposed to be a quarter of a truckload. Mm -hmm. I scheduled a half of a truckload because I, I knew how it's been going with this customer. Right. So we get there and it's a three truckload clean out. Wow. And it's me and one other guy. If I had a two truck mm -hmm. operation, this wouldn't be an issue. Maybe it would have been a little bit of an issue, but it would have been able to be, you know, alleviated with, you mm -hmm. know, two more guys in another vehicle. Um, so we ended up, can I ended up canceling the other customers for the rest of the day. Um, mm -hmm. One of them was totally fine with it. The other guy was super pissed. Um, yeah. I ended up talking him off the ledge by the end of the day and we ended up doing the work for him and it was totally fine, but it puts right. me in a really bad position because mm -hmm. if, if I had me as a homeowner, if I called someone and scheduled them to do something and they called me the day of, mm -hmm. and they were like, yeah, listen, man, I can't do it today, but we can do it next week. Yeah. I'd be like, get out of here, man. I don't, I don't even want to give you mm -hmm. the business. So it makes me look bad because I'm trying to take right. care of this problem over here and I'm, you know, sure. but I have to, you know, push these people back. So right. those, those to me are bad jobs. Any job mm -hmm. that's like a massive amount of material or mm -hmm. there's junk everywhere. Um, as long as you have, as long as you know it up front and you have time mm -hmm. to schedule it, that's like, yeah. that's a money pit to me. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I enjoy taking on those large jobs right. that may take a day or two. Um, but mm -hmm. to me, bad jobs are defined by a, a big miscommunication um, because Communication. we're in the yeah. business of helping mm -hmm. people out, right? So, you know, if you have a sofa mm -hmm. that you want removed, that's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. But if you have a sofa and then on top of that, you have mm -hmm. a basement full of stuff and then to make that worse, that's the day you're closing on your house and everything needs to be out, but you didn't tell yeah. me that, you know, right. it just puts us in a really bad situation. And a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just have, I know I'm sensitive of your time. I know I only scheduled a half an hour. Do you have a few more minutes for? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, on your Facebook page, it says that you recycle se about 70% of items that you remove. So I'm curious if that's standard in junk removal, how you manage that and um why why you choose to do that so what anyone will find in junk removal is mm -hmm. your biggest not your biggest ex expense but one of the larger expenses you have is your dump yeah. fees right. so you have to you know and it's in the conscious of your mind of you know are you are you just gonna dump everything mm -hmm. and not recycle yeah. it's kind of just like you know, the state the world is in, I mean, we're, we're, right. we're, I don't know what's going on with global warming. I'm not a rocket scientist, but yeah, you, you know that if you have a bunch of paper, you can't just mm -hmm. throw it in the trash. You got to put it in the separate right. bin. You got to recycle it. And mm -hmm. after that, you don't have to know anything. You just need to do your part as a human on this earth. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So not, not only, not only that, but so this is where your dump feet in right so if you right. have a box of books or a box of files and mm -hmm. um you know that's all a bunch of weight so if you recycle right. that you might have saved mm -hmm. yourself 50 bucks you save yourself 50 wow. bucks every couple days that could add mm -hmm. up to you know five ten grand at the end of the year um mm -hmm. so we do our part as much as we can um not only to donate stuff mm -hmm. which also helps nice. with dump fees but mm -hmm. Um, donating stuff offsets dump fees, in my opinion, because of time. So mm -hmm. if we're planning to donate stuff, that's a lot of time out of our day that we could be doing other jobs because we don't have donation yeah. centers close to us. So what we do- I was going to say, how do you manage that? Yeah, it seems like a lot of work to coordinate that. Yeah, it's it's a nightmare to do it. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, okay. it's a lot. And, and we tried to do it um, as much as we could before we had the shop mm -hmm. and it was near impossible to keep anything in good condition mm -hmm. to save and then get to a donation center. Now that we have the shop mm -hmm. space, 
it's easy for us to pull in, we offload it, okay. and we don't think about it until we have a slow gotcha. day. And mm -hmm. then we got kind of go through the inventory and, and figure that out. But, um, mm -hmm. but back to recycling, I mean, you got to recycle just in general, but it helps, it helps in dump fees. Um, sure. and, and it also, um, it also helps if you have like our transfer station, not now because of COVID, mm -hmm. but they have a goodwill trailer, um, sure. at the, uh, at the transfer station. So when we're mm -hmm. packing the truck, we have the junk first, we have the metal, we have any type of recycling paper, cardboard, plastic mm -hmm. cans. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then we used to have like, all this stuff we would donate bags of clothes kids games sneakers nice. um wow. stuff like that that we would bring yeah. into the um the goodwill trailer stuff like mm -hmm. that i mean if you're doing a full truckload of bagged up clothes i yeah. would be shocked if a donation center was going to take that oh, so what, what? you know in that situation you might end up dumping some of them or you have to go through mm -hmm a lot of them to make sure that they're, you know, clean enough to be donated. Sure. Um, yeah. But, but recycling is, it saves you money as the, mm -hmm. as the business owner. Um, mm -hmm. And it also saves you space in the truck. Um, you could be in a position mm -hmm. where, you know, you've, you've packed your truck with all the junk and you have a bunch of recycling. Mm -hmm. So you could go to your transfer station or your landfill or I guess the landfill is you don't recycle anything in the landfill, but right. you go to a transfer station, you can kick off all that recycling and now you've freed mm -hmm. up X amount of a space. Of space. Yeah, so yeah. instead of dumping, if you have a lot of these places have mm -hmm. a minimum of 175, so you could dump one couch for 175 or mm -hmm. you could go do another couple jobs, fill up your truck and mm -hmm. dump all of it for 175. Gotcha. Wow. So, very, very interesting. Um, okay, I just wanted to ask you a couple more questions and then I'll, I'll let you go because I'm sure you have a busy day. Sure. Um, I'm curious, like, if you have a blooper moment, like a, the funniest funniest moment you've had on on the job or while filming your videos, um, our, our readers love to, our, our audience loves to hear that, so. Yeah, so I wish I was prepared for this question because I can't think of, I know there's a couple super funny, I can't think of them off the top of my head. I'd have to say, unfortunately, like mm -hmm. older folks always have like, they always have like their depends or these yeah. like, you know, adult diapers or whatever. But mm -hmm. there was a time where we opened a closet door mm -hmm. and I don't know what was behind the wall of the pens, but we opened the door and it just fell on top of both of us. And oh, wow. <laughs> it, it knocked over. I think it was my buddy that was working. This is like mm -hmm. right when we started. Um, yeah. So that was like kind of funny. That's not like, that's mm -hmm. not blooper. If funny, you think of something else, if you think of something else, you can send it to me later and I'll, I'll add it in. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just wanted to ask you, like, what have you found have been the main challenges of running your business? I know you said you're still in the truck, but um, like, what are you looking forward to this year? Uh, what are some problems that you'd like to solve this year? For Absolutely. Your um, so problems that or what I guess what I'm looking forward to this year mm -hmm. is expanding. I am looking mm -hmm. into um, getting another truck and getting someone on that truck. Sure. Um, and I think right. one of the uh, one of the biggest problems that I'm looking forward to kind of diminishing, it's never really going to diminish, but um, mm -hmm. finding good, reliable people to work with you that yeah. have, um, you know, a good, uh, I don't know, have a good mindset and a good attitude mm -hmm. every day. That's right. the that's the hard part because you can find mm -hmm. great workers but an everyday guy yeah. is um someone who like who shows up mm -hmm. and they're, they're ready to do it and yeah you know you have to understand as like the business owner is you know you're the one who's making all the mm -hmm. money and like hint hint to everyone out there like yeah you're making that that's that'll be the difficult thing and and that's mm -hmm. that's the most difficult thing and it's going to be sure. ongoing for anyone whether you're a locksmith mm -hmm. or you install or clean right. gutters 
is just, sure. you know, having a guy that shows up every day is one thing. And then mm-hmm. having a guy that shows up every day, have a good attitude um, is another. So yeah. it's like, you know, you, like I said uh, beforehand, if you find a really good guy, just pay him to stay on. You can't, you can't pay these guys right. as, you know, 50 bucks an hour, but mm-hmm. um, pay him, you know, enough to, you know, keep him showing up because you right. just given people minimum wage sure. to do a job like this, you know, you're just going to mm-hmm. have, turnover and turnover and then you're going right. to have to continuously be training and mm-hmm. um just it's a mm-hmm. you know, kind of a daunting process when when you know you have all of this work because i've been in that position where i've had mm-hmm. a week's worth of stuff and the guy that's you know working with me decides not to show up on tuesday mm-hmm. um and then he doesn't answer his phone for the rest of the week but the week yeah. after he shows up on monday and i'm wow. like I haven't heard from you in a week, you know, get out of here. I already got right. someone else, you know, filled, mm-hmm. filled in. Wow, that's it. very challenging. So. Um, can I ask you um, as the last question, first of all, just one small thing. I have to say, I love your Facebook cover photo. Um, oh, yeah. That was great. <laughs> your wife is such a sport for, for, uh, for agreeing to that. I think it's, I think it's so awesome. I loved it. So um, I love those photos. I'm guessing that was from your wedding, right? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's that actually awesome. funny how that uh, that happened. Mm-hmm. So that morning, um, so my wife and I live over in Newton, and, and my okay. uh, that's that's my mother's house. So at the time, mm-hmm. um, I was parking all of my equipment there because where yeah. I normally was renting, um, mm-hmm. they basically kicked everyone out because they were selling the selling the place. Mm-hmm. So uh, that morning, actually. I went and worked on my wedding day. I did a job wow. with my older brother and wow. the trailer wasn't supposed <laughs> to be there. So I backed the trailer in and I was like, oh my God, these wedding pictures, like we can't go anywhere near the trailer because <laughs> we were supposed to have a wedding, like an actual wedding mm-hmm. with you know, a bunch of, we, we had like 300 people on the list and we were yeah. like COVID, we ended up having eight people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And we just, we, we took pictures in my mother's backyard. So we're mm-hmm. taking pictures out there with the dogs and stuff. And I'm like, I just dumped the trailer. It's pretty clean. I was like, I'm about to hop inside that. You want to hop in? And she was <laughs> like, there's no way I'm getting in that trailer in this dress. And I was like, well, just stand near it. We'll take a funny picture. <laughs> uh, but she's a I loved it. She's like my biggest supporter. She, she'll, I love that. You know, she'll go high and low with me. And uh, wow. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Maybe actually, because you mentioned COVID and we didn't talk about that at all, um, just that. And then I, I want to ask you uh, one last question, but um, how has Corona, how's, how has the coronavirus impacted your business? Um, are there any like major changes that you've made? Um, how is how is life under COVID and junk removal? Yeah. So, and that's a great question because uh, for anyone watching this who's mm-hmm. is interested in either learning more or sure. or joining the kind of junk removal industry, yeah. COVID has kind of proven um, to at least me as a business owner in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. which is one of the hardest hit areas, um, sure. that yeah. it's obsolete to the business. Mm-hmm. If anything, COVID has has grown my business Mm -hmm. exponentially in these Mm -hmm. slow these you know quote unquote slower months in the winter um Mm -hmm. one of the huge huge why do you think that is i think it's just because i think it's because people are people are trapped inside their houses and Mm -hmm. they've had so much time to debate you know Mm -hmm. oh the virus is gonna end it's gonna end and and unfortunately it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight Mm -hmm. um so over all this time now they're like okay you know what we waited a year let's just redo the bathroom Mm -hmm. or let's Mm -hmm. get all of this crap out so we can reclaim our basement and we can you know make a little hang out there for the kids or we can have company Mm -hmm. over um and i think being home living in not your (laughs) not Mm -hmm. living in your filth but just living in your home, you start to realize like, why, why is all this stuff on this shelf? Why yeah, yeah. this here, you know? Um, right. So one of the big things that, that COVID um, kind of 
lifted um, as a mm-hmm. not really a problem for for junk removal, but it lifted the whole scheduling thing and trying mm-hmm. to work around people's schedules. Every time right. I get a call now, it's just we're home. Give me a call when you can oh, come yeah. pick it up. And mm-hmm. it's made we've been able to do so many more jobs because of that. Whereas mm-hmm. before it was always you know, what's your schedule look like? And I say, well, you know, we're, we're slam packed, but we're going to be in Needham on Mm -hmm. Tuesday at this time we can swing by and they're like, oh no, I'm working. And a job Mm -hmm. that we do now, we can do it in a day or two of the phone call Mm -hmm. back before COVID. It might've been booked two weeks out because their schedules didn't align with ours. Wow. So that's really interesting that you say that. Yeah. uh, Yeah. At the beginning we didn't know if we were allowed to operate because in Massachusetts Mm -hmm. they said, you know, mandatory business ban. And uh, so, you know, I was like, I guess we're going to take a week off. Mm -hmm. I was just driving around in the dump truck, hoping that I got pulled over. I was like, I don't know if I can operate or not. So I ended up. And then they made it clear that you were, you were considered an essential business, right? That was clarified. Yeah. I mean, Mm -hmm. no one ever told me, but (laughs) we didn't (laughs) didn't get, (laughs) nothing happened so uh, yeah yeah I mean I think technically if we if anything were to have happened um you know especially for these homes that are either going on the market mm-hmm. or a loved one had passed away or someone's yeah. being moved to assisted living that is essential mm-hmm. for for you to get a company in there for sure to kind of, right. you know move move things along the process because yeah. there's no other business that's mm-hmm. going to do that unless you you know sure. your family and friends are willing to you know right. help you out yeah. with it hundred percent. Um, okay. Last question. What was your favorite video to shoot so far? And what do you love about junk removal? Uh, why, why should someone start a junk removal business? Yeah. So my favorite video so far, I was actually going through them today because I don't even mm-hmm. know what footage is in any of these videos <laughs> okay. because it's all just like a wash in my head. But, yeah. um, the one, for me it's the music that I put behind it I don't I don't know like awesome I put a lot of thought into the music (laughs) like I'll be up at like 2 Mm a.m just clicking different sound bites and my wife is like you just go to sleep like you're crazy (laughs) Um, you do it all yourself that's the audio video editing yeah yeah I do all the video editing myself yeah I uh I shoot (laughs) it I edit it I uh Mm -hmm. chop it up I I put sync it up to the music so I think Mm -hmm. that's the the audio engineering side of me and the, right, the audio said, visual yeah. stuff mm-hmm. that I'm like really mm-hmm. into. Um, and I've, I've put some of my own music in yeah. the videos and then nice. um, I looked it up and there's like, I don't have obvious, I don't copyright my music because I'm just making mm-hmm. stuff in my, in my house. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was, there was something in the YouTube like language that I didn't want to deal with. So I I've opted out of, mm-hmm. of doing that for at, the, at least for this time. But my favorite one is, I forget what it's called, but it's us throwing cardboard out of the truck to a dumpster. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know. It's that one or the one where any, anytime we're, we're filling stuff up from a garage, this is actually better. Mm -hmm. Anyone, any video that there's stuff coming from a garage and I can put the camera down and we can mm-hmm. see the stuff coming from the garage and someone's up in the truck. Those That's are awesome. great to me yeah. because um, cause I can kind of chop the time-lapse footage on beat mm-hmm. to, um, to the music. Other than yeah. that, um, I'd say the, my, I think my, my favorite one right now is the shed demo that we did mm-hmm. with some of the slow yeah. motion footage. Because uh, yeah, that was that something was awesome. different that I didn't really... Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching, I, I was actually watching, a. Uh, um, I was watching Netflix and I fell asleep mm-hmm. and then my TV put on, uh, just the regular TV and it was a music video <laughs> channel. And I was okay. like, this, I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but this, this music video is pretty sick and it was all slow-mo. So I was like, okay. we're doing a shed demo tomorrow. Maybe I'll just, you know, <laughs> film a bunch of footage and I'll make a music yeah. video out of a shed demo. <laughs> But it came out pretty cool. It came out pretty cool. That's awesome. What's your favorite thing about junk removal? Why do you love your job? So I love my job because not only do we get to talk to 
different people every day, but every mm -hmm. every day is a different setting five mm -hmm. times a day, six times a day, even if yeah. it's only two times a day, or mm -hmm. even if it's we're doing one job, you're not you're not locked into I mean, yeah, you show mm -hmm. up to the same place every day and you're you're in the same vehicle, you're essentially doing the same things, but you're always in mm -hmm. a different home, you're in a different neighborhood, you're talking to people. Sure different walks of life you you're coming across stuff where you know you hold it up to the you know mm. the guy the guy who's working with you and you both have a laugh about it or um you find something cool <laughs> and you're like oh my god i've been looking for this like yeah. you know i can bring this home and i, I can use this mm. myself or um sure. i know a, a friend or an aunt or an uncle who would love this mm. um so it's yeah. just kind of every day is the, every day is a new day in the aspect mm. of you know you're you're not experiencing the, the same thing mm -hmm. yeah it's you know it's physical labor and you know right. uh, you know we are removing junk every day but um mm -hmm. it's, it's just seeing different things and on your regular nine to sure. five you, you go to that desk or you go to that office and you got your paperwork yeah. you go to lunch at the same time you do this with junk removal right. it's all everything's up in the you air you never know what to expect right <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know yeah. you're showing up at seven and you're you're yeah. leaving you know, right around four o'clock every day. Mm -hmm. Right. Steve, I really, really appreciate it. I learned so much from you.